everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me one quick favor, see that little black subscribe button on the bottom of your screen, go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button really does help this channel grow my audience grow. And I appreciate it more than, you know, also quick, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook of the Betfred Sportsbook app, bet $50 on any game. Get up to $1,111 in free bets, courtesy of the Betfred Sportsbook. Thank you again. Now, here is the video that you came here for. Even though this is a little bit of a slower time, right? Peach Jam ends. First of all, we get the, the summer, the spring recruiting rush with the portal. You get some NBA draft stuff, some late portal stuff. But really, Peach Jam, the end of the high school season, that's essentially where the basketball news really pretty much stops here for the next two, three months, at least until the fall when kids start to take official visits to campus. I bring it up, though, because there was one very interesting story and a very interesting update on a topic that we have discussed before. And so I want to get to it now. And it involves the recruitment of arguably, arguably the best high school player in high school basketball, Cooper Flagg. If you remember... We talked a lot about Cooper Flag in the lead up to and during Peach Jam. 6'8 forward, originally from Maine, plays at Montverde Academy. Um, and it, I was blown away by how awesome he was at Peach Jam. Again, about six foot eight, a guy that can initiate offense from the, the, the point forward spot almost. Now he can go in the post and get you a bucket, but can initiate offense, can catch on the fast break and get right to the hoop, can get through contact, can finish with both hands, not to be nerdy. Really good basketball player, though. Defensively, he was maybe even more impressive. Multiple games where he had a triple-double at Peach Jam involving blocks. I saw Adam Finkelstein, a great college basketball recruiting writer, say that Cooper Flagg is probably the best player that he has ever seen at under seven feet protecting the rim. In other words, you know, just great instincts for a guy that isn't super, uh, you know, super big, super long, but at six foot eight, he guards like a guy that's six ten, six eleven, seven feet. So Cooper Flag, we talked about a lot during uh, Peach Jam, and we also talked a little bit about his recruitment. And if you listen closely, there were really two separate updates on Cooper Flag. I did one kind of at the early stages of Peach Jam, where I said, "Look, one, he is a twenty twenty five kid right now, just finished his sophomore year of high school." But because of his age, it seems almost certain that he's going to reclassify and play college back, reclassify to the 2024 high school class and probably play either college basketball or go pro uh, in the G League Ignite or Overtime Elite a year from now. So play one more year of high school basketball, then either go to college, G League Ignite, whatever. At the same time, what I also said in that first, uh, the, the, the first update on him, I said, look, it really feels like this is a heavy, heavy, heavy Duke recruitment and that the pro option seems to be legit. Well, during Peach Jam, I got some very interesting intel that I shared with you on a second update about Peach Jam a few weeks ago. And that was that I had actually heard that the UConn Huskies, defending national champs, and yes, my alma mater, that they could just be lying in the weeds ready to pounce and get Cooper Flag. Now, of course, when I said that, I, you know what I got. Oh, Torres, you're a homer. Oh, of course, you're going to bring your school into it, blah, blah, blah. Listen, listen, my school is my school. It was cool to be in Houston this past spring. That has nothing to do with anything. I said, look, it, uh, facts are facts. A spade's a spade. I think he's being recruited by UConn. I think UConn thinks they have a shot. Everyone mocked me. Everybody laughed at me. But the update that I want to share today is this. It is now starting to become common knowledge that UConn is very actively recruiting Cooper Flag, and that UConn thinks they have a shot. Here is an article from 24-7 Sports. I know I mentioned Adam Finkelstein. It's from a different writer named Kevin Flaherty. I don't think he likes me. He tweets at me a lot. Whatever. Neither here nor there. Here is what Kevin Flaherty wrote about Cooper Flag. He said, everyone is trying to get Flag." but nobody is far enough ahead that they've picked up a 24 seven sports crystal ball. However, don't be surprised if this recruitment comes down to Duke versus defending national champion, UConn. UConn is coming off winning the NCAA tournament and is closer to home, although still four and a half hours in a car. Duke, on the other hand, 
has John Shire. He is arguably college basketball's best recruiter and has made flag a priority. So, remember a week ago, whenever, oh, Torres, you're such a homer, it's because it's your school. Well, guess what? Where Aaron was right, because guess what? All the recruiting writers now are starting to say what I told you a week ago. UConn is very much in the mix for Cooper Flag. Now, to be clear, let me let me let me say this. I don't think UConn is a favorite. I'm not really sure that there is a favorite with Cooper Flag because he's very early in his recruitment. Remember, he is by technicality still a sophomore. So schools are limited, you know, up until a few weeks ago on how much they could actually even contact him. Um, and he really hasn't done the whole visit tour yet because again, he just finished his sophomore year going into what could be his junior year. But again, the expectation is it will be his last year of high school basketball. He'll get his grades together and 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 play a year ahead of schedule. So I don't think UConn's necessarily the favorite and Torres is planting his flag. It's going to happen. He's going to UConn. That's not what I'm saying at all. Duke, I think, feels very good right now. As good as anyone can feel. UConn feels very good right now. G League Ignite will be a factor. And one thing I would say really quickly about recruiting is this. I get a lot of this from fans, right? They see their their school tied to a player that they want. Well, Torres, where is the recruit? Is my school going to get the guy? And what I say is, in general, a lot of times, I don't even think the player knows this early in the process, and I think that's the case. But at the same time, as I said a few weeks ago, I do think UConn is more of a factor than people have given them credit for. One, as Kevin Flaherty, the writer of that article, said, UConn is geographically in New England, Maine is in New England. Um, and obviously, look, there's 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 geographical ties. Flag's family is very involved in what he does. If you watch Peach Jam, the whole family was sitting behind the bench. I believe they said on the broadcast, a busload of people from Maine came down to uh, North Augusta, South Carolina, or whatever it's called, the town that hosts the event. Um, so the family's very involved. It would make it easy on the family. Two, as I mentioned, there are very, uh, maybe not obvious, but but as I said, and I don't think anyone's really picked up on this yet, there are family ties between the Flag family and UConn. Donovan Klingen, starting center next year. He was a backup center this year, really good, key piece to help UConn win a national championship, projected, by the way, as a lottery pick next year, from the state of Connecticut. His late mother, and unfortunately she did pass away, but played college basketball with Cooper Flagg's mom. Maybe the tie is minimal, but you can't say it's nothing. And I think the other thing that is worth noting on this one as well, and I said this a few weeks ago, Dan Hurley is not acting like a man that is conceding Cooper Flagg as a recruit to anybody. As best I can tell, there were really only two coaching staffs that made Cooper Flagg a priority in this recruiting cycle that were at every one of his games. Dan Hurley was front and center at every one of his games. Multiple coaches from the UConn staff were at every single one of his games. UConn, sometimes they say they ran two, three deep, which means you can have four coaches that are recruiters in the building at any given time. And UConn would sometimes go three or four deep with their entire staff watching Cooper Flag. Does that sound like a staff that doesn't believe that they can get him? So this is worth monitoring. It is worth paying attention to. And again, we'll get some updated information in the coming months as to is he going to reclassify and how soon will he play college basketball? If he does, who are the schools that are going to be in the mix? And we'll obviously talk about it going forward. One last quick thought. Uh, if you are a little bit of a recruiting junkie, okay, that's this. Pay attention to what UConn's doing here over these next couple months and frankly, these next couple years, because it, this is kind of a little buzzy thing in the UConn community. Dan Hurley may, in the next two or three years, take UConn basketball recruiting to a level that it's probably never really been at. And we might talk about this a little bit on Monday's show because UConn is projected to get a four-star guard named Ahmad Noel this, this weekend. But why I bring it up, and, and I have no insight on that one. I'm not saying Ahmad Noel is a lock to UConn because I know there's going to be some UConn fans that jump in the DMs. Um, but UConn's in an interesting spot. Because they have now, over multiple years under Dan Hurley, they're now producing a lot of NBA players. And we've talked about this over the years. Dan Hurley has mentioned several times his roster when he came to UConn, it did not look like what a UConn roster should. 
no disrespect to the former players, but he said we should have NBA bodies, NBA size, NBA length, NBA athleticism. Well, 2021 NBA draft, James Book Knight, lottery pick. 2022 NBA draft, Tyrese Martin, the only player from the Big East drafted in the 2022 NBA draft came from UConn. 2023, obviously, Jordan Hawkins was a lottery pick. Andre Jackson, an early second rounder, Adama Sinogo went undrafted but had a good summer league. So I bring it up and say you're producing pros. You're going to probably have two or three more in the coming years just off the 2023-2024 roster. Donovan Klingon, who I just mentioned, Stefan Castle, a freshman this year, are both projected as first-round, maybe lottery talents. Alex Caraban, a starter on last year's national championship team, some believe is an NBA player. You just signed the number three recruiting class in 2023 behind only Duke and Kentucky. Kentucky was one, Duke was two. And then most importantly, um, Cooper Flag is from the state of Maine. And A.J. DeBonsai, who's the number one player in the class of 2026, will probably reclassify up basically a freshman going into his sophomore year. He's from the state of Massachusetts. So at producing NBA players, elite high school class in 2023. Uh, 2024 is off to a great start. They got a four-star Isaiah Abraham, and then also a four-star guard. Um, Ahmad Noel is projected to commit this weekend. Cooper flag, maybe UConn's in the mix. AJ DeBonsa down the road, maybe in the mix. Just keep an eye. Keep that one in your back pocket. Torres tries to tell you stuff that's going to happen before it happens. And like I said, I think UConn could go on a recruiting run over the next two or three years that frankly, a lot of people that frankly, UConn basketball has never done.